my neighbors and friends, and welcome to our Bible study program. And as always, I do thank you for joining us for today's lesson. It is good for you to do so. I pray that you will be blessed for doing so. Today's lesson deals with the subject of forgiveness. What do we know about forgiveness? Do we know how to forgive others who trespass against us? Do we know how God forgives us? Do we really know what the Bible teaches about forgiveness? No doubt, we all have been taught something about how to forgive. No matter how much we know or think we know, there is always room to learn just a little bit more about how to forgive. Before we go into our discussion of our lesson, let us take a few moments and bow down before our Almighty God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, the Maker, Creator, and Ruler of everything, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. We approach Your throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We thank You for this day and all the blessing of life. We pray, dear Lord, that your words will comfort the hearts of the sick, the bereaved, and the afflicted, and those in prison. We thank you again, dear God, for this day, and for our daily substance that you have provided. Dear Lord, help us to have a more loving and forgiving hearts. Forgive us of our sins and transgression. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
to our lesson and find out what we can learn about how to forgive. Our primary reference and background lesson texts are from Matthew chapter 18, Luke chapter 17 verses 1 through 4, Acts uh, chapter 2, and also Ephesians 4, 32, and Colossians uh, 3, 13. The golden text for the lesson is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. To supplement our study, please make a note of other scriptures as we go through the lesson. Let us take advantage of this opportunity to study the Word of God so that we may cultivate a forgiving heart. I don't know how many of you know anything about the true act of forgiveness, what forgiveness is, what is required to forgive, if there are a set limit of the number of time to forgive. Well, my friends, perhaps today's lesson is a good starting place to learn about forgiveness. The main objective of our study is for all to reach the right understanding about God's law of pardon. That is to say, how God forgives sins. We must learn what we must do for God's law of pardon to take effect on us. Remember, God's law of pardon is not amenable to everyone the same way. That is to say that God has laid out a set of condition and terms in which the alien sinner, the unsaved, must meet for their sin to be forgiven. And God also has spelled out the condition and terms for the Christian, those that are saved, to undergo to get their sins forgiven. Do we know how God forgives the alien sinners? Do we know how God forgives the Christian? To learn these condition and terms required for both the saved and the unsaved will eliminate all the misconception and errors concerning how God forgives. The Bible tells us uh, about the story of the raging mob of evil men spewing out venom of hatred against our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We can see and hear the envy and hatred as they cry, crucify him, crucify him. To the howling mob, it was envy and hate that caused them to hang Jesus on the cross. To God, it was his amazing love and grace that caused him to allow Jesus to suffer the death of the cross for us. Without the shedding of Jesus' blood on that cruel cross, there could be no forgiveness of sin. Oh, what great love! Oh, what great love! What matchless love! Now, let us visit the passage of Scripture and see the response of Jesus to those who were crucifying him. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lot. Luke twenty three thirty four. We can clearly see in the scripture that Jesus, who was hanging upon Calvary's cross, was praying to his heavenly Father to forgive them, for they know not what they do. The them that Jesus was praying to his Father for were those men who were crucified him. We can tell what forgiveness is by knowing what God does when he forgives. Do the men who hang the Lord of glory on a tree and crucify him deserve to be forgiven by God? Many of you, no doubt, may feel that those men did not deserve forgiveness because of their horrendous deed. But the Apostle Peter laid the groundwork for them to receive forgiveness. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Friend, the men who crucified Jesus wanted to know what they had to do for God to forgive them of the great evil that they had done. Would you be willing for God to forgive them if they had done this to your only son? God's law of pardon does not rest upon our feeling, belief, or opinion. 
God's prophecy to provide forgiveness of sin was fulfilled through the crucifixion. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Luke chapter 24, verses 46 and 47. See also Isaiah chapter 53. Then Peter commanded them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38 Then they, that is about three, about 3,000 souls, that gladly received his word, were baptized for the forgiveness of their sin. Acts 2.41 do evil and, and hatreds exist in our world today? Yes, evil and hatreds are abounding all over the world. Everywhere we look, there is hatreds and evil running rampant. When we look around our community, we can see in every corner, families against family, neighbors against neighbor, sons against fathers, daughters against mothers. When we look over the land and country, it looks as though the whole world is in a state of terror. Danger and harms are lurking on every continent of the globe. It seems as though the whole world has sunken into a chaotic cesspool of hatred. Yes, my friend, hate is abound all over the world. Many of the troubles with one another in this world could be done away with if the desire for forgiveness was present. People set about to harm or kill one another because of a deep feeling of resentment in their heart. They could not pray, Father, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We all need to learn to let go of those resentment and desire for revenge. God will render the proper vengeance on people who have hurt us if they do not repent. Dearly beloved, vengeance, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Woman 12, 19. Well, we all have an earthly tendency to take care of things ourselves and to seek to get even with those who make slight remarks or take something that is ours or hurt our families. The Lord set in place civil government as minister of God to execute wrath on those who do evil. Romans 13.4 Sometimes even those officials do not do a very good job of protecting the innocent and punishing the evildoer. Even if they fail, God has a final judgment day to set things right. He will render vengeance on the evildoers. That is the reason there is a hell fire. Our part is to have a forgiving heart and not seek vengeance personally. Many psychological problems could be avoided if we have the desire to forgive. One of the main things that psychiatrists seek for people to do is to let go that hate, let go that resentment that has eaten out their spiritual hearts. People are made miserable by hoarding up in their hearts all the ugly things that people have done to them or they imagine people have done to them. The Lord say, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 and 27. Also, my neighbors and friends, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32. Forgiveness is an act of the will. To forgive does not mean that we will not feel any better about some ill thing that has happened or that the damage done against us is any less. We simply do not hold it against the offender anymore. 
we are not pretending that it didn't hurt or that it didn't matter. We simply refuse to hold a grudge. We have been forgiven and we also forgive. How often do we have to forgive? Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Peter asks in Matthew 18, 21. The question I submit to you, is this impossible to know? It may be impossible for you to answer that question if you have not been taught to forgive. Till seven times. Why seven times, Peter? Seven is a sacred number among the Jews, also indicating perfection or completion. It was used very often in a symbolic manner for the whole of a thing. Yes, my friend, Jesus is the divine teacher. So let us examine and share a portion of Jesus' teaching to learn how more about to learn more about how to forgive. Let us make no mistake about this. God will not accept our excuses about not knowing how to forgive. Jesus said in Matthew six fourteen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. What if you don't forgive men their trespasses? Listen to what Jesus said about that. Jesus said in Matthew 6.15, But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It is crystal clear that we must forgive men their trespasses in order for God to forgive ours. When should forgiveness take place? The word forgive generally means to pardon for a fault, sin, or trespass, or to absolve a person's errant action. Let's search the scriptures to see when forgiveness should take place. Jesus said in Luke uh, 17, 3, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Let's examine what Jesus commands us to do. The order of thing to do, number one, we must rebuke him. That is the trespasses. And number two, the trespasses must repent. And finally, forgive him if he repents. Now let us clearly understand what this passage of scripture is teaching us. Simply speaking, the offended person must rebuke the trespasser. To rebuke means to reprove sharply, to reprimand or admonish. As we have already learned from 2 Timothy 3.16, that the scripture is given for reproof, and reproof is the act of rebuking. If we rebuke the trespasser in accordance to the scripture, the reproof should lead him to correct his errant action. When a person finds himself wrong, he should regret and be godly sorrowful, godly remorseful, for the wrong he has done. This will lead to repentance. This is said that if he, the trespasser, repents, forgive him. As we can see from Luke 17, 3, forgiveness comes after a person has repented of his trespasses. Is an apology the same as repentance? Jesus said in Matthew 18, 15, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. What if he will not hear you? Jesus said that if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That is, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Matthew eighteen sixteen. This must be done to determine the fact and truth in the matter. Jesus further stated, And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Matthew eighteen seventeen. Now let us return to the question that Peter asked Jesus in Matthew 18, 21. That is, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee 
seven times, but until 70 times seven. Jesus responded in a similar manner in Luke 17, 14, 17, 4. And if ye trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thy shall forgive him. My friend, Jesus is the divine teacher. Jesus teaches an unlimited forgiveness. To forgive is to love. My brethren, remember that forgiveness starts with love. Without love, there can be no forgiveness. God so loved the world, or God so loved us, that he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Colossians 3.13 Don't let your sins go unrepented. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And remember to be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. My beloved brethren, we have redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1 7. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Let us remember the unlimited forgiveness taught by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For you yourself are taught of God to love one another. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9. And finally, my beloved brethren, be kind one to another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. My friend, what great evils that you have done and are doing that prevent you from seeking God's forgiveness. You must repent of your sin, confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and go down into that watery grave of baptism for the remission of your sin. And there, by faith, you will come in contact with the cleansing, redemptive blood of Jesus. All your sin will be washed away, gone forever. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2.13 Those of us who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ have redempted through the, his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. For those of you who have not obeyed of the gospel, how in the world can you say that you love Jesus but won't obey his gospel for God to pardon your sins? I pray to God that this lesson will help open up your understanding that you might understand the scriptures. Love should be the motivating factor behind forgiveness. The Lord demonstrated his great forgiving love by dying for us while we are yet sinners. How in the world can you say that you love Jesus? but cannot forgive those who trespass against you. Yes, to forgive is to love. I will return with the final words of my lesson after this song of encouragement. In my heart sometimes I ponder As down life's road I wander To a city over yonder Peace and love abide Where my trials are gone forever The tears will find me never You'll see there'll be a place for me And I'm going there someday Dear Lord, look down upon 
sings And all that I possess You'll see There'll be a place for me And I'm going there someday I have started for a city That's free from shame and pity It's a bright eternal city And I'm traveling on my way Someday I'll have to leave you And all that I possess You'll see There'll be a place for me And I'm going there someday Mercy Well, my neighbors and friends, I hope you will take advantage of the opportunity that we have learned in this lesson about forgiving others. I know it seems difficult at times to put into practice what we have learned. It is easier to learn what we have to do than doing what we have learned to do. Well, this concludes our lesson for today. I thank you for taking a part in this lesson. Please join us again next week, the same time and radio station, if it is the will of God. May the Lord bless and keep you until next time. Be brave.